Hi, I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath, and today as we prepare for Passover, I want to talk about transforming pain into blessing. The Passover Seder, the narrative begins with these words, This is the bread of affliction that our ancestors ate in Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat with us. The holiday of freedom begins when we teach our children to transform our past affliction into concern and sharing for others. When the Jews were released from Egyptian slavery, the Torah commanded, You shall not wrong a stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt, because you were oppressed in Egypt. Learn from it not to oppress the stranger, not to oppress the orphan or the widow. The Jews could have derived an entirely different lesson from their slavery experience. Having suffered so much, they could have felt compelled to inflict others They could have made others suffer, as has happened so many other times in history. Their motto could have become, do unto others before they do unto you. But the Seder begins with the opposite, the opposite approach to suffering, calling on us to transcend victimhood. This is the bread of affliction that our ancestors ate in Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat with us. Judaism wants us both as individuals and as a nation to use pain as a springboard for good. In 1909, a woman in Manhattan named Henrietta Zolt learned that a man that she had loved for years and had planned to marry had abruptly gone off and married a younger woman that he had just met. Zold was no longer young and knew that she wouldn't find a husband. A lesser woman in her situation might have withdrawn from the world immersed in self-pity or anger. Instead of wallowing in despair, she channeled her anguish into love and into good deeds. She founded Hadassah, the Women's Zionist Organization, which over the course of decades inspired millions of Jewish women to perform great deeds of love, including saving the lives of children in Nazi-occupied Europe and founding one of the world's leading medical centers in Jerusalem. Unable to find a man with whom to share her love or to heal her wounded soul, and unwilling to see that tremendous love go to waste, she built a worldwide organization to dispense love and healing. When she died, she was buried in the Mount of Olives in Jerusalem, and her gravestone reads, Mother of Thousands. Henrietta tasted the bread of affliction and rejection, but stayed resilient and said, Kol dichvin, whoever is in need, I will help. I will bring blessing into the world. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath, and those are my thoughts for today.